The Scuba Pro A700 uniquely utilizes modern robotics with legendary craftsmanship, requiring over 200 steps to build each masterpiece. It is pneumatically balanced, plus features a newly positioned vacuum flow deflector, which set a new worldwide standard in both performance and breathing characteristics. During this presentation, we will cover all aspects of a typical annual service including disassembly procedures, general cleaning and inspection, reassembly, and final on-air adjustments and testing. This tutorial is intended to assist you and further support tips, techniques, and subject matter covered in the Scuba Pro Workshop. To properly service the A700 second stage, the following tools or suitable alternatives are required. Scuba Pro Universal Tool, Pneumatic Adjusting Tool, Torx T10 Driver, Torx Plus Torque Driver, Brass O-Ring Pick Set, Narrow Flat Blade Screwdriver, 332nd Ball and Allen Wrench or Suitable Alternative. Always reference a current schematic and tech notes taken during your specialized Scuba Pro workshop. Pull the second stage hose sleeve back to expose the low pressure swivel. Loosen the swivel using the Scuba Pro Universal Tool. Do not remove the jam nut. It is factory installed and held in place with a specialized locking agent. Using a Torx T10 driver, remove the four front cover screws. Remove the front cover. The screws are conveniently held in place with O-rings to avoid losing them. Remove the O-rings as new ones are supplied in the annual service kit. Separate the purge cover and ring. Inspect the integrity of the purge cover and ring. The metal stainless steel S insignia is not removable. Carefully remove the inhalation diaphragm. Replace it if it smells of diesel or gas, is tacky or distorted. Hold the diaphragm to light and stretch it from four points to check for punctures. Reposition and repeat to be sure there are no punctures and that the diaphragm is imperfection free. Inspect the smooth operating side of the disc for signs of wear. Replace as necessary. Next, remove the dive switch assembly. First, remove the safety seat clip by placing a flat blade screwdriver in the negative detent, then slide your finger or thumb to provide support and pry via light leverage. Pull the complete dive switch assembly free from the second stage case and remove the two O-rings using a brass pick. Lift the decal from the adjustment knob using a suitable device. A new decal is supplied in the A700 maintenance kit. Unscrew the 4mm adjustment knob Allen screw and remove the O-ring. Pull the knob free from the adjustment shaft. Push on the adjustment shaft end to separate it from the dive switch. Screw the adjustment shaft clockwise to separate it from the metal sleeve. In some cases, you may find it helpful to use the adjustment knob. The technician micro-adjust is concealed within the knob stem and is driven out clockwise using a small flat blade screwdriver. Tech Tip Temporarily screw the micro-adjust into the adjustment shaft. This will give you more area to grab and assist with the removal of the 126 O-ring. Remove both the shaft O-ring and sleeve O-ring using a brass pick. Push the poppet assembly free using a blunt, small diameter tool like a 332nd ball and Allen driver. Note that the driver of choice must be slim enough to pass through the center of the adjustable orifice. Remove the balance chamber and spring. Expel the O-rings out of the groove slightly with one set of fingers and shove off with the other. Avoid use of tools as they may cause damage. Pinch and separate the low-pressure seat. Using a magnifying glass, inspect the poppet shoulders for any signs of wear due to cam action. Though rare, replace is needed. Lever need not be removed. Visually inspect the lever to be sure an inexperienced technician hasn't bent it previously. The lever should parallel the inlet tube from end to end. Flow deflector or aspirator need not be removed. If you must, it is a snap fit. 
The flow deflector is orientation specific. Look inside the inlet tube with proper lighting to be sure the lever tabs deep inside the inlet tube are present and imperfection free. Fully engage function number 7 into the back slots of the adjustable orifice. Unscrew counterclockwise until the threads have disengaged, approximately four rotations. Expel the adjustable orifice with care by pushing slowly from the knob side of the inlet tube. Your tool of choice must clear the lever tabs and orifice knife edge. Remove the O-ring with a soft brass pick. Now thoroughly inspect the knife edge surface using your fingernail to detect any nicks or imperfections by rotating the orifice back and forth. Remove inlet tube O-ring. Grasp, twist, and pull the exhaust tee free. The slight twist helps remove and or break up unseen encrusted salt. Note the position of the index finger and thumb inside the ends of the exhaust tee. Exhaust valve need not be removed. Inspect the exhaust valve for any signs of damage or imperfections. Note, inspect for insect and rodent damage. Look from the side to be sure the exhaust valve is laying flat and maintaining a good seal to the case. Remove the mouthpiece by releasing the specialized clamp locking device. To release the clamp lock, position your tool of choice on one of the outside guides of the locking mechanism rather than the hook itself. Pull the mouthpiece free and inspect. Grab, twist, and pull the mouthpiece support free. Note the location of the serial number. We are now ready to clean the separate components using an ultrasonic cleaner and suitable solutions specifically marketed by scuba industry suppliers. Isolate any delicate parts to protect them from damage. A 35 millimeter canister works well to protect the knife edge. Place all parts into the stainless steel basket. Place into the ultrasonic cleaner and activate. Rinse cleaning solution away thoroughly with fresh running water. Let's proceed with drying off components with air, paper towels, and cotton swabs. Just be sure they are clean and dry each time. Inspect all parts along the way, including the adjustable orifice. Detail the adjustable orifice using a common pencil eraser. We are now ready for reassembly. Open your new Scuba Pro service kit and prep accordingly. Push the mouthpiece support or trim collar onto the case tube and then fit the mouthpiece. Orient Scuba Pro on top. Spread and fasten the specialized hook and lock clasp. It is a cam action. Position the clasp on the inlet tube side to avoid interference with the dive switch. Install the exhaust tee. With thumbs inside the larger tee outlets, position and angle the exhaust tee into the section between the mouthpiece tube and exhaust valve retainer ring. Feel for the exhaust valve retainer ring. Grasp the case from the other side with your fingers. Press together and roll your thumbs forward, feeding the remainder of the tee onto the ring. An alternative method is to grasp the case with one hand Position and angle the exhaust tee into the section between the mouthpiece tube and exhaust valve retainer ring. Note, whichever installation method you choose, it may be helpful to heat the exhaust tee warming a bowl of hot water in the microwave or using a hair dryer. With the adjustable orifice slots at the 12 and 6 o'clock position, lubricate and install the 132 O-ring using both thumbs. Apply a dot of quality lubricant to the beginning threads. This will ensure easier removal during the next annual service. Simply push the orifice into the inlet tube. No adjustment yet. Lubricate and refresh the new poppet O-rings and low pressure seats supplied in the maintenance kit. Push the lubricated O-rings into the grooves. Pull the second O-ring onto the stem and use your nail to pull past the first and into the inside groove. Apply a bead of quality lubricant between the O-rings. Utilizing a clean, hard, flat surface, Firmly press the poppet onto the low pressure seat uniformly. Wipe the surface of the newly installed low pressure seat to remove manufacturing residues. Let's test for airtight integrity by capturing air. Seal the low pressure seat hole with thumb. Place the balance chamber onto the stem just enough to cover the O-rings. Now squeeze the components together, 
creating an air spring. Note that the chamber should spring up and down as you push and release. If the components go flat, submerge underwater to detect the source of the leak revealed by bubbles. Preassemble the poppet, spring, and balance chamber. Orient the pair of poppet shoulders down in relation to the lever, up, and insert into the case inlet tube. The objective is to engage the poppet assembly with the lever tabs. Apply pressure with your index finger and the lever should rise. Maintain the spring load and push the lever down. If correct, the lever will return under spring load. Cycle several times. Refresh these components with new O-rings. Following are some suggestions to facilitate assembly. Here's a tech tip. Temporarily screw the micro-adjust or the adjustment screw into the adjustment shaft. This will give you more control to install the 126 O-ring. Push and spread the 126 O-ring onto the end with the nipple. Once the 126 O-ring is in place, unscrew the micro-adjust and proceed. The following component is a dynamic application. Lubricate the O-ring groove and slide the 293 O-ring down the adjustment shaft into the first true O-ring groove. Then lubricate the male threads. Spread the 351 O-ring onto the metal sleeve. Push the micro-adjust into the adjustment shaft and hold with finger pressure. Using a narrow flat blade screwdriver, insert through the shaft. Turn the micro-adjustment counterclockwise until the micro-adjust bottoms out. To preset the micro-adjust, bottom out counterclockwise and then advance clockwise exactly two full rotations leaving a one millimeter step. Screw the adjustment shaft into the metal sleeve. It is helpful to temporarily use the adjustment knob to finish. Screw until the shaft bottoms out. Prep the dive switch by installing both O-rings supplied in the maintenance kit. Note the shortcut. Lubricate and spread the new 160 O-ring into place. Repeat and slide the second O-ring into the next groove. Push the adjustment shaft sub-assembly into the dive switch. Push until it bottoms out. Orient the metal sleeve tabs north and south in relation to the two long and short dive switch guides. The metal sleeve tabs engage into the case inlet tube guides. Place the dive switch assembly into the case. Orient the long tab towards the mouthpiece and engage into the flow deflector guides. The two dive switch tabs engage into the two flow director guides and are location specific. Here is an optional step only to be used if needed. If a gap is present between the dive switch and case, hold pressure with your index finger as seen here. While holding pressure, engage the adjustment knob and turn counterclockwise. The gap will close. The C-clip retainer land is now accessible. Orient the retainer clip wave top inward and snap into place. Press the clip top and bottom to be sure that the new clip is correctly engaged. Lubricate and install the 347 inlet tube o-ring. Engage function 7 into the orifice slots. Screw clockwise until the lever drops slightly. This is not an adjustment. By lowering the lever approximately a quarter of an inch ensures no interference when installing the inhalation diaphragm resulting in a watertight seal. Tap the lever as needed. If the disc was removed from the diaphragm, return. Hold the center of the disc, feed the diaphragm into the midsection and into the disc groove. Inspect to be sure the diaphragm is not distorted. Check for previous folds or creases on the diaphragm lip. Any imperfections found merits replacement. Be sure the entire circumference of the diaphragm is laying flat and into the case diaphragm groove. With the outside of the ring tab at 6 o'clock position, press the cover into place orienting the bottom of the S logo towards the tab. Place the two-piece assembly orienting the ring tab into the case notch located at the 6 o'clock position. Organize the screws and new O-rings.
Press the screws through the front cover and through the new 363 O-ring. Align the cover with the screws and O-rings already installed. Begin to screw the four Torx screws down using an X tightening pattern. Using a Torx torque driver, tighten the screws to the recommended 6.2 inch pounds. We are now ready for final on-air adjustments and testing. Let's proceed by connecting the inline adjustment tool. Now charge the A700 with intermediate pressure air. Set the diver inhalation control knob to its lightest setting. Note the two bars. Place the dive switch to min. Advance the spool and engage the orifice slots. Rotate counterclockwise until a slight leak is present. Note the IP gauge drops indicating the valve is open. Then clockwise until the leak stops, plus 30 degrees more to stabilize the adjustment. Press the purge valve slightly and watch the IP gauge to determine lever height and location. The lever must kiss the diaphragm disc. Avoid lever rattle. Now we are ready to check the inhalation effort using a magnahelic gauge and accurate IP gauge. To properly measure the inhalation effort, the practical option is to connect a magnahelic gauge to the second stage mouthpiece via specialized accessories. Gently draw a sustained inhalation, watching for the point where the IP gauge drops indicating the first stage is open and flowing. At that very instant, capture the reading on the magnahelic gauge. Your target inhalation effort is 1.1 inches of water. We do not advise setting to an effort of less than 1.1 as the second stage is sure to become unstable. Make any necessary adjustments via the micro-adjust and flat blade screwdriver by increasing or decreasing the spring counterforce. Recheck the adjustable orifice position to satisfaction. No lever rattle should be present. Pull back on the inline adjustment spool to disengage prior to attempting removal of same. It is good practice to use water to verify in-water behavior. First, flood the second stage to check for leaks via bubbles. Your hearing may not be as good as you think. Second, return to the surface, drain all water, and seal the mouthpiece with your thumb.